What's up everybody? My name is Slim and welcome back to my channel. We got the full spoilers for chapter 1109 out right now. So I'm gonna go over it. Before I start, I gotta say like right now, this might be my favorite arc post post time skip because there's just a lot going on. A lot of crazy, you know, revelations that are going on. A lot of crazy reveals, big power ups, crazy devil fruits. We get a bunch of awakenings as well. So this to me is my favorite post time skip. And it's just crazy to see uh, where we came from. You know, we went from the whole cake island to Wano. And then, you know, we had the uh, what, whatever the other, the little mini arc as well. I, I forgot the name of it, but we had all that going on. And it just seems to be getting better and better. And it's crazy to see how uh, how Oda has kind of changed it up uh, since he took that little break. And I've been really uh, impressed with his work lately. And so I'm curious to see uh, what you guys think has been the best arc post time skip. And so that's just a little question I have. And do if you do like my video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, uh, anything, any questions or any speculations. I love the theories. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, Chapter 1109, titled Obstruction, uh, limited cover series number 26, Wano Kuni. We see Onigashima sinking just like the ancient Wano Kuni, or sinking under the sea towards ancient Wano Kuni. Sorry, I got the uh, old spoilers remembered in my head. Chapter starts where the last one ended. Recording that started in last chapter was made in the past by Vegapunk. Uh, we can see Shaka and the other satellites with him too. I saw someone uh, say in a comment section on Reddit that apparently it looked like it was all the uh, satellites and all the Vegapunk, you know, just the Vegapunk that uh, that have died are in the recording and not the ones that are still alive. Uh, so it's interesting to see. But, you know, in this article, it says it's differently. But I'm going to, uh, you know, when the chapter comes out, if I do a review, maybe I'll check and see if it actually is the ones that are dead are the only ones showing up on the recording. But I'm not sure. It's something to keep an eye on. Vegapunk broadcast signal makes the Marines dent and mushy all over the world broadcast his message and no one can turn them off. So it looks like um, as long as nothing happens with the message... Uh, it's going to be broadcast everywhere, and there's nothing the Marines can do. So it definitely seems like the Gorosei uh, are going to be trying to stop the message and getting to where the message is coming from. I don't think they'll be able to stop it, though, and I think this is why it'll be known as the Egghead Incident. And, uh, you know, there is a high chance that, the you know, um, Emu actually ends up destroying Ed Egghead Island as well. And there's a chance... My theory, I got a theory on this, which I'll just go on later into the video, but I feel like there's a chance Emu decides to just drop the um, uh, the ancient weapon or the one that Vegapunk created on this island and it's somehow broadcasted over the world uh, to show that they have this ancient weapon or, uh, you know, fake ancient we weapon and they know about Emu as well. So that's one of my theories. Let's get back on the subject. Shaka suggested that the people around the world would need some time to prepare uh, their screens for the visual dendam mushies. And Vegapunk tells people of the world he will wait five minutes so that everyone can prepare their screens for the visual dendam mushy to work. Usopp and Nami group are seeing Vegapunk's message. They are confused about what Vegapunk is actually doing. Uh, and there's no news about Zoro, Jinbei, or Brook. It, I don't know why necessarily they even put this part in the chapter if they're not going to show the rest of the Straw Hats. But, uh, I mean, they're in there. So we're just getting a little group, uh, a little bit more about the rest of the Straw Hat Pirates that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, then we cut to Luffy. He is still grabbing Saturn's hand. And there is a panel of him. It's showing him grabbing Saturn's hand again. Or Saturn's head again. The four members of the Gorosei and Mary Joie are talking to Saturn, and it seems like they're using some kind of telepathy, probably related with their powers, uh, and that's how they're communicating. You know, it could be because if Emu actually has a devil fruit of like the devil himself, and these are some of his henchmen, uh, and they're just like kind of like a uh, trickle down effect. Uh, you know, there's the top top tier. Uh, emu and then the rest of the people underneath him there could be a trickle down effect where all of them can kind of communicate telepathically interesting to see if they're all kind of interconnected like that or maybe it's just because uh they all have the uh the um uh you know the the youth the youth uh 
what is it? The youth experiment on them where they are uh, immortal, the immortal experiment. But that, you know, that could not be connected. That could be. Uh, and then we got message from the Gorosei, and then they're talking to each other about whether Vegapunk is actually really dead. And then Saturn says, I think so. I saw Kizuru killed him. Then he must have used his death to trigger that broadcast. And probably the source of the signal is coming from the Labo phase, says the Gorosei. Now we see people all over the world react and prepare to receive Vegapunk's message. In Dress Rosa, we see Rebecca, Leo, Kiros, and other people preparing their screens. Leo says, is that the doctor whom Lu uh, who Luffy Land is holding hostage? And it, this, uh, breaking down a little bit, uh, it's cool to see that we're going to get people from Dress Rosa, which we haven't seen in a while. Uh, curious to see uh, if they've changed any with their designs or if they look pretty much the exact same. And then it looks like Leo is just showing that the newspaper is reporting that Luffy uh, is in fact holding a, a Vegapunk hostage, even though he's actually not. And then you go back, we'll go back. Rebecca says, don't believe those news um, that tries to make Lucy look evil, Leo. And then we go to Fusha Village. Whoop Slap says they haven't had a projector in the village, so they'll just have to hear Vegapunk's voice. And so... I thought earlier from, uh, I think it was just the spoilers from last, uh, from yesterday, where I'm like, there's no way that they would just have the visual Dintin Mushies and not the one that just has audio. So it looks like it doesn't have to be visual, but there's definitely something that Vegapunk wants to show that's uh, to the world visually. And uh, it won't show, it won't convey his full message if they don't, don't, don't have it, but they'll still be able to hear a lot of the stuff, uh, which is very important. Uh, but I do think we're going to get a lot of stuff uh, a big, big reveals. And I think he's going to have something on the visual, uh, the video that is going to show either, you know, something with the world government with Emu or anything, or maybe the powers of the uh, Gorosei and uh, what they've been up to. I'm really, I really think that next chapter is going to be like a bombshell chapter. And I mean, to be honest, this chapter is pretty crazy too. But it, to me, it just seems like we're going to get the climax next chapter. Okay. In world economy newspapers headquarters vivi is computer is confused about where luffy is recording or where he is in the recording morgan says the broadcast must be pre-recorded and then wapo is in the background with them too and now we go to water seven where it is nighttime iceberg wakes up and tells his genius secretary alice uh which has an italian pronunciation alish to prepare some screams to brought to prepare some screens to broadcast Vegapunk's message. Looks like we're getting a little bit of Water 7, and it's kind of cool that we're going to be getting this because, you know, you got Lucci and um, whatever, I forgot the other guy's name, uh, Big Nose, who everybody, I don't know why I can't, I can't always remember the character's name. <clears throat> but uh, it's kind of cool that we're getting uh, Lucci and them and then we're also getting people from Water 7 in the same kind of arc, just kind of showing how they've grown or what they look like. It's probably not going to be that much of a difference, but it's just cool to see it. And then Alice says, I've already prepared screens all over the city, President Iceberg. In Kamabakta Queendom, Ivankov is surprised to see Vegapunk's new head. And uh, Dragon is thinking about the moment Shaka told him that he was about to die. And, you know, if you've watched the recent anime episode, they actually just went over uh, a Shaka talking to Dragon um, about him being able to or about him dying. And there's, an, you know, there's been speculation on what he actually said, what Shaka actually said to Dragon. But we're not getting that yet. We can see more people's reactions on other random islands. So that's going to be cool to see other characters as well. Back to Egghead Island. Luffy wonders why there's no damage to Saturn. And he decides to use another strategy to attack him. Excuse me. Kizaru shoots a laser beam through his eyes, but Luffy dodges it. So it looks like we get to see that uh, Kizaru can actually shoot, la shoot laser beams, kind of like Superman. And, you know, the pacifistas and all them, or the Seraphim. And I'm really, I'm really curious to see if that's as strong as his other lasers, or if it's going to be pretty much the same strength uh, or weaker. Luffy then slaps Kizaru and Saturn together with his giant hands, using a very strong attack called Gomu Gomu no Don symbol. 
you know, kind of like how a monkey, there's the little monkey bombs and in, uh, in Nazi zombies that have the little uh, symbols and they smash them together. It's it's similar to that move right there. And then they're turning kind of into like a flat paper. They're getting flattened out. And they also have stars going around in circles in their heads. And that's very, very reminiscent to something you see in Tom and Jerry. I'm pretty sure in Tom and Jerry, they've had a scene where uh, uh, Tom uh, gets hit by symbols and, you know, the stars come up. So it's kind of a cool callback because that's kind of what I grew up with was Tom and Jerry. Even though it wasn't my favorite, I still watched a bunch of it when I was younger. So I'm really excited to see that. Luffy then grabs uh, Squash, Kizaru, and Saturn and throws them both in near the sea. Kizaru hits a battleship and we see him lying down panting in the ship. That pretty much means that Kizaru is taking a good bit of damage and he's getting worn out. So he might actually be defeated by Luffy uh, or... He, it's showing that Luffy might actually be stronger than him. Uh, whether they end this fight because of the things that are happening uh, is up for decision. I don't think they're actually going to finish this fight, but I think it's going to kind of power scale some of the admirals compared to where Luffy is right now. So, Kizuru was damaged during this, uh, during this little altercation. However, Saturn flies back like a boomerang and attacks Luffy with his legs. Saturn is using a technique similar to Luffy's Gomu Gomu no UFO, where he's spinning around in a circle. I'm curious, uh, maybe maybe they kind of have moves similar to Joy Boy. Uh, if Luffy, uh, if his powers are, you know, if this move is similar to what Joy Boy's is, or if Joy Boy just had a cartoony uh, kind of effects, maybe, maybe since uh, they're similar, like he's the light and Emo's the dark, they can kind of do similar moves as well. I'm curious to see if we're going to get a lot more Saturn moves and if they're similar, um, you know, similar to Luffy's moves now that he has uh, this cartoon effect to his gear fifth. Luffy dodges the attack that Saturn uses and he's angry when he sees that Saturn is uninjured. Luffy says, what? Why isn't he taking any damage after all I did? We then get four members of the Gorosei make contact with Saturn again. Gorosei says, Saturn, there is no time. We cannot allow Vegapunk to talk. Saturn then says, I know. Then I should call you all. Black lightning appears on Egghead Island. Marines that are seeing this are wondering what's happening from battleships, and they are in shock. I wonder if the rest of the Gorosei, when they get summoned onto the island, if they're going to be knocking out Marine fights, uh, Marine, Marine fighters as well, or if it's just Saturn that has that capability. Really... And whether or not these these um the rest of the Gorosei are stronger or weaker than him, it seems to me that he would be the weakest one. But we do not know for sure. We're probably gonna get more information uh, on what the, I'm ex expecting them to show in their devil fruit uh, form versus their actual uh, human form, because Saturn is already in his devil fruit form. Uh, but I mean, Oda could just tease us like that, and I really hope that's not the case. In the epic final double page of the chapter, Saturn touches the ground and four giant magic circles appear around him. Huge black flames come up from the magic circles, pretty much insinuating that they are coming from up in the ground and they are now teleported to this area. And to, I mean, it makes sense. If they have telepathy, maybe they're all connected and they can all get summoned by each other just with a link. Uh, I don't know if it's the magic itself that links them together or if it's a mixture. Maybe it's just all like dark magic that links them all together. Whether uh, Emu is the leader of the dark magic and he actually has full control and the rest of them can kind of link up together, but they can't get Emu involved would be very curious to see. I, I feel like it has something to do with that because... I don't think they would be taking orders from Emu if they weren't uh, underneath his control, a little bit at least. And so Luffy is in shock and his eyes are popping out of his sockets, seeing what is going on right now. Luffy then says, what are those? <laughs> we get an old reference. I wonder if this is inspired by the what are those meme. Really curious to see. Because if Oda is on that... I give Oda props because that's not a that's that's kind of a newer meme. I mean, it's kind of dead now. That was like what Vine years, but still, maybe Oda's a little more hip than everybody expected. We then get Sanji carrying Vegapunk, and he observes the shock and the black flames that appear where Luffy is fighting. 
And then that, I believe, would be the end of the chapter. We do have a break next week, but there's a lot to talk about in this chapter. Uh, so, you know, I said earlier, I feel like um, Vegapunk, his, uh, his little uh, message, I'm thinking like, I know like he's dead. It says he's dead because his heartbeat dropped and you saw that in a panel and that kind of triggered the signal to be released out. I'm really curious <clears throat> if the broadcast is all past events or if he's also going to be broadcasting stuff that's happening on the island. I think that it would be kind of a miss, a miss out on or mistake from Vegapunk to not like actually show his, I mean, he can show the message on his uh or that he pre-recorded at the lab as one of the parts but i also think he should be blowing up or not blowing up but like exposing the world government for trying to come after him because i mean at one point i feel like he's got to know that the world government was going to come at him and the only thing you got to do if you're going to be dying in those situations you kind of got to expose them just like you know how whitebeard exposed uh the world government and and the Marines to the pirates who they were on the island. I doubt Vegapunk would just go out with nothing. I feel like Vegapunk is the type of man to go out fighting. And I don't actually mean fighting, fighting, but like exposing something is something Vegapunk would do, especially as a scientist. So anything that he has, he knows the knowledge that he knows, I feel like he's going to be revealing it in this message. And I think it'd be a waste if he doesn't, in fact, show the island and uh, the Gorosei or what's going on at the island at the moment so that people get the actual truth of what's going on. And to me, that would be huge revelation if he goes over what uh, happened in the Void Century and then the uh, Devil Fruits that the Gorosei have and, you know, Emu and how they all operate under Emu and he's ruling or he or she is ruling the world. And so... That's all I got for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you do like my video. And then until next time, you know, I might have a review of this chapter. So you might catch me later this week, but not sure. But peace.